Uh, Chair, we have less than a minute. Okay. Uh, we start the meeting, okay? Can we get everybody sitting? Okay. Okay, Chair, we're ready. Okay, I'd like to call the Sugarland 4B Corporation meeting to order on Wednesday, August 18th, 2021 at four o'clock. Uh, first item, citizens who desire to address the city council board and, uh, and the, or the commission with regard to matters on the agenda will be read or received at this time. Do we have anybody? that wants to present? No, ma'am. All right, I'd like to close this item then. Thank you. Next item, consideration of an action on the minutes of the July 21st, 2021 meeting. Are there any questions or comments? Questions, motion to approve. Motion to approve, is there a second? Second. Second. Who was the second, sorry? Watley. Oh, thank you. All right, it's hard to see you guys from the distance. I can't see you. So, um, Director Gassani? Uh, 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 yeah. And Director Atkinson? Aye. And Director McCutcheon? Aye. And Director Watkins? Uh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Director Kamarli. Hi. And I as well. The motion carried unanimously. Next item receive and hear all persons desiring to be heard on Sugarland 4B Corporation Resolution 2021 0808, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Sugarland 4B Corporation approving a request by the City of Sugarland to fund improvements at Memorial Park. Daphne presenting. Hello. Hello. Next slide, please. Can I control the slides? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, so okay, perfect. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm here to bring a finding and funding resolution and public hearing uh, regarding the Eagle Plaza. And I know some of this information for a couple of you uh, who are on the city council may be a little bit duplicative, but for the, for the benefit of the group, I'm gonna go through a, a little bit more detail. So oh, this is the background on the project and this goes way back to the establishment of the uh, Sugarland Memorial Park. So the park yeah, itself. So in 2006, the park was named by the city council. So about 15 years ago, the park was named. And then a few years later, the council established a task force to really figure out how to memorialize active service members and veterans. And then that, that task force came out with uh, four recommendations, which you can see on the screen here. And I'm going to just walk with this here. Number one, here are the entry flags. They're in the roundabout. Number two up there is the more iconic landmark, that Remembrance Tower that you see in the peninsula. Number three is the newly installed Eagle that was recently installed in March of 2020. And then number four hasn't yet been started. That's the Welcome Home Project. 
So to fund these projects, the city established a 501c3, which is the Sugarland Legacy Foundation. They do a lot of work. They've done 15 projects over the last 10 years, not just for Memorial Park, but uh, they are the fundraising arm for these projects. In 2010, later that year, the entry flags were completed. 2013, the tower was completed. In 2020, the first phase of the Eagle was completed. Oh, okay. okay, here are some photos of the first phase of the Eagle. So you'll see the, the statue, of course, there. There's some light landscaping there, as well as some electrical, which you can see in the bottom right-hand corner. This is uh, back, I, I can't remember when we started this. This is, this is the sort of creative vision for the project. You can see Joe, I think that's you. Is that you, Joe? That is Joe. That is Joe standing on it. That is Joe standing on an empty hill. <laughs> and then the right-hand sign there, uh, that's, uh, uh, did Fun Lin do that? Yes. Joe. So Funlin, our, our parks development manager, uh, did this, this, this image here. You can see some broader landscaping there and some amphitheater style seating, really a beautiful uh, creative concept there. Here is a more formal site design. And I just wanted to highlight this because we do have a principal donor for the project. Oh. Colonel RPS Bala, as well as his oh, wife yes. Conwall donated $100,000 for this phase of the project. Again, this is phase two. So you can see we are gonna recognize that donor here. And the donor selected this quote that you see here, which is we seek peace knowing that peace is the climate of freedom, which is an mm. Eisenhower quote. Oh, very nice. Here is the site design that we had done by White Oak Studio. And we can see, um, and, and for the people on the call, I know you can't see me pointing, but I'm hoping to explain both for the group here as well as digitally. In the sort of center uh, of the photo, you'll see the eagle there, sort of that half circle moon shape thing. And then the grayed out landscaping behind the eagle is what is already existing. Those are crepe myrtles already existing that you saw in the previous photo. The phase two design, you can see a lot of concrete work around here. This is that amphitheater style seating that has that quote on the bottom of longer seat. There's lots of landscaping, shade trees. And then these two areas here on the more uh, left-hand side of the photo, these are grassy seating areas. There are two of them there. One has a seating wall and the other has two benches. So there's several elements here in phase two. And before I get into, <clears throat> excuse me, before I get into explaining what I mean by bid alternates, um, we knew that this principal donation deducted with the design. So the principal donation, $100,000, the design itself cost about 14,000, leaving about 89,000 remaining. We knew that we may be over budget. So the parks department created these bid alternates. So things that we can set aside for a future phase that don't necessarily need to be done if the bids come in over budget. So that's what these bid alternates are. The first bid alternate number one are these benches in the seating area here. The second are the tree plantings. So we have these crepe myrtles here. All of the tree plantings all together, including the shade trees are a bid alternate. Three is the irrigation to support the, the landscaping. And then number four is the seating wall, this extra seating wall on the edge there. This is why I'm here. This is uh, the, the numbers, the reason why I'm here. So we had an original budget estimation for phase two of the project at 104,259. We already had cash in hand donations at 103. That includes of course that $100,000 donation. We had a little bit remaining over from phase one and then a couple of uh, smaller donations to the project totaling again, 103.5. The expenses, which I already mentioned, are that professional design that we saw that we saw on the previous slides, and so that leaves a remaining balance of about eighty nine thousand dollars. Well, when we went out to bid this summer, and when I say we, I really mean the Parks Department, <laughs> Joe William and his crew. I had nothing to do with this. I, I'll I'll give them all the credit for this. Um, but when they went out to bid, the bids came in way over budget. And I, I think when we talked that through, we're really contributing it to increases in labor, construction, materials costs. I mean, we, we really didn't anticipate this kind of increase, but it is what it is. Uh, the Parks Department would tell you that we had three qualified bids. This is the low bid. So uh, they mentioned to me that rebidding probably wouldn't do us any good. We had three qualified bids. This was the low one. We don't think we're going to do any better if we go back out to market. So the base bid that you're going to see here, that is with no alternates. So going back to that image, I just want to remind you here. 
the base bid, just to do this project base bid, take out all the trees, take out the benches and the seating wall. So you're left with the concrete, essentially concrete. And then the three, you're left with these three, one, two, three, and then the concrete here. Daphne? Yes. For the benefit of us on virtual, can you use your mouse and show what's left on the base bid, please? Sure. Okay. So the base bid is going to get you this concrete here, as well as these three seating walls here. So you can eliminate all of this uh, landscaping here, this seating wall, and these two benches here. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let me just reset my mind. I, I, I got off track there for a minute. So uh, base bid, so we were talking about the base bid to get that concrete in those three amphitheater style seating walls. That bid came in at 122, 222. So about 20,000 ish uh, over budget from what we anticipated. If we wanna do everything that came in at 147.7, of course we wanna build in a contingency. I haven't been doing this long, but I've been doing it long enough to know that very few projects come in um, on budget and on time. So building in that contingency is gonna be essential for this project. So what funds do we need when it, when it came to really looking at the bid and, and doing that, that, that analysis of what we need, we need, about $40,000 to just do that concrete. And then we would need 65 to do everything, to do the full bid alternate. So um, seeing this and knowing this, uh, when we received the bids back, um, staff met, we met, we met with parks to kind of discuss, we, the Legacy Foundation met to kind of discuss how we can get there, how we can get this project done. We have this $100,000 donation, how do we honor that donor? Um, and so what we came up with is, is a, the proposal that looks like this. Because we're nearing the end of the fiscal year, the Parks Department found about $10,000 left in their budget, their operational budget for this year, that as long as we can get the contract done this year, they can contribute those dollars. And then when we met with the Legacy Foundation board, we were lucky enough to have a board member that matched that parks donation. So another $10,000 equaling that $20,000 that you see on the screen. So what we're asking here today is for the 4B to match that $20,000 to get us to that base bid. Um, bid alternates would be funded in a future phase. Um, unfortunately, we're just not in a place right now to be asking for an additional money. So uh, I just wanted to highlight this slide that just for phase two of this project, 77% donations. I think that is just superb. I'm really, really proud of this community for coming together for that. 15%, that 20,000 that we're asking for uh, is from 4B. And then that $10,000 from the city is, is only 8%. So largely funded by donations. So with that, staff is recommending holding a public hearing this afternoon, approving resolution number 2021-0808 in the amount of $20,000.00 in SL4B funding authorization for costs associated with Eagle Plaza at Sugarland Memorial Park. And with that, I would recommend opening the public hearing. All right, I'd like to open the public hearing at 4.12 p.m. Is there anyone here to that we need to receive and hear persons regarding Sugarland 4B resolution 2021-08-08 at this time. No ma'am. All right, I'd like to close the public hearing at 4.13 p.m. Next part, consideration of an action on City of Sugarland 4B Corporation resolution number 2021-08-08 a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Sugarland 4B Corporation approving a request by the City of Sugarland to fund improvements at Memorial Park. Do the board members have any questions or comments? Director McCutcheon? Yes, thank you. Um, what was the spread in the, in the bid? I thought we got three up and then. Were they pretty high or were they pretty far apart? Uh, they were really fairly close together. Wasn't it? It's hard to hear. Sorry, I turned away. Yeah, sorry, I turned away. I asked what the bid, what the spread of yeah. the bids were. The 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 bid spread. The, we actually received four bids, and then one was really high, and they didn't really provide the breakdown for the bids. So it really came down to three uh, qualified bidders. And then they, uh, looking at the numbers, they were fairly consistent. They weren't. 
a lot of times when we get bids, you'll see when you look at the breakdown of the numbers, there's a wide variety of, of where they put their money, which is the case here. But when it came down to it, the first the first low bidder, which I'd like to add is a, is a contractor we've worked with uh, on numerous projects and has done really, really good work for us in the past. So we have a lot of confidence in them. Uh, they were the low bidder. Uh, I think they were about, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were about uh, fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars above the lowest bidder, and I think that the third bidder was about an equal amount in that same range. Okay, so. That's going to be my next question. Well, if if we'd work with the okay. uh, first, the low bidder before, so that's what okay. we have. Uh, great to hear. I think this is a fabulous project, and I'm really excited that the, the parks uh, is, is going to be able to contribute some. And very grateful to the Sugarland Legacy Foundation, you know, person for for willing to to match that. Uh, I mean, do we have twenty five thousand dollars in our reserve that we could draw down to, um, you know, to, to proceed without the alternates to get some seating and stuff in, or is that just completely out of the the possibility from a budget standpoint? Our reserve for opportunities for this fiscal year is gone. Um, and we, I mean, we worked really hard. We still have some outstanding um, contracts and work that we need to be doing. And then our, um, from the Sherland 4B side of things, we have really maxed out our program. So we're pulling this from our day-to-day -day program to try to help make the project happen. So um, we felt comfortable with that. Yeah. And I also think that at some point it is important for the Legacy Foundation to still feel the weight of their responsibility to raise funds for projects like this and super supportive of the 4B Corporation being involved in helping this one. I mean, the inaugural Legacy Foundation project did have a match from the 4B Corporation, so I think that makes sense. But I wouldn't want to set a precedent of fully meeting every goal. Now, if there are ideas on how to help the Legacy Foundation quickly raise the difference, I'm sure they would appreciate that help and support and those ideas there. But I would want them to continue to have opportunities to fundraise. Um, to answer your question, though, on the bid tab, it was 122000 base bid for Jordan which was the lowest bidder, it has done work with the city in the past. They've, they've bid a lot for city of jobs. Uh, the next was Stonecastle, 133000 but I think they were disqualified because of they didn't provide their financials, and that was a requirement. And then, and then 158000 for Landscape Art. It was, I, I've heard good things about them, too. And then two eighty five for e-contractors. E so three pretty close, and then one really, really high. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a question. The, no director. Thank you. The the seven thousand contingency is that included in the one hundred and twenty two thousand base bid? No, ma'am. That is in addition to one twenty two. So we do we have a contingency uh, for this built in, or is there? We, do we have to add that? Is it... so the one twenty two plus seven would get us to? Oh, the presentation's not up. Um, the one twenty two plus seven. Is, is what we're asking for. It's that $40,000 that we need that we're okay. splitting between. It's already included there. It's not Good. an additional $7,000. Okay, I just want to make sure we had that in there. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Amy, yeah, I have I, I, Go ahead, Director Kamali. Or Director Ghassani. One of yeah, you, was, Director yeah, Ghassani. Was me. Go ahead. Yeah, so two, two questions. One, uh, I know this site has uh, flooded in the past. Uh, and, and I'm assuming that has been taken uh, under consideration with all the improvements. Will, will the improvements survive the flooding? Second question is, if we uh, complete the project under budget, then what happens to the remaining funds in, in a situation like this? Can you guys take the first? I mean, I, kn I know that drainage was considered. I remember talking about it with engineering, but I, I'm really not uh, an uh, expert. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, good question. And we definitely... Absolutely good question. We absolutely considered uh, a, a drainage and this park does flood from time to time. Although, you know, not as often as people think. It, it really took a lot during Harvey to get this area flooded. This area is elevated slightly on a hill. Um, that hill did not flood during Harvey, but the base of it did flood. But actually concrete seems to hold up the most when according to flood. So it's something we did look at. It is in a, a, a floodway. So we did, we're looking at cut and fill balance. So we can't import in more than we take uh, take out. So that's part of the reason why the cost is because we are going to have to rem remove some soil out of the area because uh, we're bringing in concrete. So that's part of the cost, but it's also part of the floodway reg uh, regulations. So we did look at all that. 
In fact, I think this this area would improve if it flooded because it would just be a simple power wash off uh, instead of erosion uh, DG moving around, which is currently there now. So uh, I, I don't think there's going to be any impact, maybe even positive impact. Thanks, William. Regarding the uh, if the project comes in under budget, I do have an answer for about half of that question. For funds that are donated to the Legacy Foundation for this project, they go into the Memorial Park Fund. And so anything over budget would remain in that fund and go to other Memorial Park projects. But what I'm kind of looking to the, the staff group here is if 4B funds are donated to the city for this project, I, I'm not clear on what would happen to this, those funds. Um, generally, what we try to do in a project like this, we would spend the donated funds first um, and then utilize the 4B kind of as the last, the backstop. Um, and return any funds that are remaining back to the corporation, um, typically how we proceed. Thanks, Sorry, you couldn't hear that. Okay. We would generally, we would return the 4B funds back to the corporation. We would spend the, uh, the donated funds first. Any Wait. other questions? Okay. Uh, not, a, not a question, but a comment. Yeah. Um, you know, we can say that we fundraised on this, but it was one donation from one one individual. Am I saying that correctly, Daphne? The hundred thousand. The, majority, from, the hundred thousand was from one donor. Yes. Right. And so, have we thought about fundraising for this? Have we? Do we put it out to citizens and say we've got this great area? where the memorial statue and everything else is. And we have a project we'd like to do and we'd like the citizens to help us. Is that something, Jennifer May, we cannot do and, and go after? Yeah, so it would be the Legacy Foundation would do that. And I'm looking at Daphne of, I believe I have seen opportunities to donate on their Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. But I think you and I'll um, look to Trisha to correct me if I'm wrong, but you as council members, you as 4B members, there's nothing stopping you from sharing these opportunities with people that you know, just like a Legacy Foundation board member would as well. And so Daphne, the, there was a hundred thousand dollar donation a, a legacy foundation board member gave and then there have been a few other small donations um including from other board members correctly the hundred thousand was not from a board member it was yeah. from a community Sorry. member it's okay and then we that. had uh, a couple of donations from legacy foundation members as well as a couple of donations from city uh, employees and um to just expand on some of jennifer's comments the legacy foundation did attempt to do a small campaign to try and fundraise the, the additional dollars that we needed and unfortunately was not successful with that. Um, and, and then I would also comment that the timing of the bid um, gives us an additional challenge. We would need to, in order to, I, I think we, 60 days, I, I can't remember, I'm sorry, William, Joe, we have a, a certain amount of time to respond to the bid, otherwise we'll have to go out to the bid. So that the, the window of opportunity to fundraise is, is smaller than an, than an open, an open door, an open window. Uh, agreed. I, I hear what you're saying, but are we putting a gun to our head and saying, well, we've got to do this because our window of opportunity is going to expire? Why are we going to do something like that when we can continue to fundraise and say, city of Sugarland, we're short X, and why not do the full project and raise the 40000 versus the delta that we've got? I, I have not personally seen anything. I've never been asked to go out and, and, and get solicitations. I don't know if the other two city council members have seen anything to go out and get some dollars for it. And, and I'm a little concerned that we are setting a precedence for, for B to continue to fund these. And that's, that's my concern is we're setting a precedence.
I just want to add the <laughs> Legacy Foundation is in a period of transition for the, I mean, like they are going yeah. through a strategic cleaning effort and everything. So I don't want to be too hard on them, especially given that like there are, I think at least two board members who have personally given to this project. I think it's a great example of the challenges and I'm Mr. Kamali to your point of how can the foundation do a better job of sharing the opportunities that are before them with the city council, with the 4B and others. From a precedent standpoint, I'm comfortable on this one, given that you're not fully meeting, you're not fully filling the gap. And literally, I think it was the first legacy foundation project in the universally accessible playground that had, I believe, a full 50% match from the 4B corporation. So I think there is precedent that the like that the 4B corporation participate, um, but I think it's good for that to be a waning amount of participation. The, the what, uh, thank you, Jennifer. And, and the one comment I wanted to add is that I'm a little more sensitive to that $100,000 donor um, than I think most folks just having some interactions with the individual that I, I really want to see this project to fr fruition for that donor. Uh, the donor just had his 90th birthday recently. So I don't wanna delay this too, too far just to be as yeah, so respectful as possible. I, I agree. I think we all agree. He was a great citizen of our, of our city and a, and a great donor and a philanthropist. And um, you know, for that reason, I'll, I'll, I'll stay back and, and say, yes, well, we can move forward. Um, but I just feel we, we shouldn't just as a city just say, okay, well, we've got a gun to our head. We've got 60 days or we've got this timeline well, screw it, roll it into the next time. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, roll it into the next one because there's no, nothing that has to get done. This project should get done, absolutely. I believe in this, I believe in this area. I'm, I'm all for it, but we should never um, have a gun to our head and be pressured into something. And prices will fall in the near future for some of these materials as well. I mean, I heard e-contractors was sounded like there were two hundred thousand dollars out of the ballpark, but it's just um, I, I just wanted to voice it that to staff and Daphne and other projects that will come, um, if there's an opportunity to fundraise, allow at least the four B corporation, allow your city council members to go out into their networks and use us. Um, for for our contacts to get four thousand dollars here, a thousand dollars here, five thousand dollars here, and or two hundred dollars here, so we can bridge the gap. But let's move forward. Question. Any other question, yeah, Director Atkinson? Uh, so I guess just if I can rephrase it to make sure I understand, uh, the initiative is really with the Sugarland Legacy Foundation and raising the money. They've, we, we've got one donor among others who's a principal donor. And for a lot of reasons, we wanna see the project or at least the base project finished as soon as practicable for reasons that we may or may not know uh, that may uh, uh, relate to the donors or other factors. Um, it's not the initiative of 4B Corporation to uh, initiate additional fundraising, it would be the initiative, if I understand, of others, such as Legacy mm -hmm. Foundation or other venues. And if additional funding from 4B were to come from that, we would, re we would consider that for that phase at a different time. Um, so our vote today would not be to suggest that we don't support the expansion two of the other, to the remaining phase that's been designed, but that we just certainly approve this phase, this base phase, and would, would uh, support any other projects or any other fundraising that may occur by others. Is that correct? I believe we have the same understanding. Sorry? I said, I believe we have the same understanding. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any other questions or comments? Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion by Director McCutcheon and a second by Director Atkinson. Uh, Director Watley? Aye. Director Gassani? Aye. Director Kamali? 
Aye. I also approve. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Next item, consideration of an action on the authorization of a marketing contract between Sugarland Development Corporation, Sugarland 4B Corporation, and Development Counselors International LTD. Melissa Raju and Kat Saunders presenting. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa and today I'll be bringing forward the consideration of a 12 month integrated marketing program for the Office of Economic Development with DCI. As you may recall in October, 2020, you approved a 12 month integrated marketing program that would help the Office of Economic Development position Sugarland as a strategic location for business investment and an economic powerhouse. During today's presentation, I'll focus on talking about the recorded successes up to date and why it's important for us to continue with another 12 month integrated marketing program for the department. As of note, as you can see on your screen there, um, the, the 12 month proposed program with DCI will run from October 2021 through September 2022 if approved within an overall cost of 361,540. The next steps include SLDC's consideration of the contract on September 7th and the start of the contract in October if approved by both boards. Next slide, please. So as a brief recap to help us achieve the goal of positioning Sugarland as a strategic location for business investment and an economic powerhouse, DCI created a three-pronged success plan for our integrated marketing strategy. The plan included components. Um, the first three-pronged success plan is number one, media relations, as you can see on your screen there, digital advertising and site selection consulting. Some of the components that I just talked about was year one, we focused on building a firm foundation by conducting virtual immersion tours with our businesses to gather potential story ideas for upcoming pitches. And we also created theme lines for journalists to explore business stories in Sugarland. For example, um, earlier this year, we met with HCCS, University of Houston at Sugarland, uh, and Champion X, just to name a few. After completing the foundational work, DCI continued with ramping up proactive and reactive pitching efforts to secure media coverage. The third component of the contract was to utilize our own channels, such as LinkedIn and Facebook, to drive positive conversation, which led to the creation of Office of Economic Development, creating their own Twitter channel. Next slide, please. And recently we just got a site selector lead from Matt Samler. He is an executive vice president at JLL to discuss, excuse me, to discuss economic development opportunities with the Office of Economic Development. As you can also see, um, excuse me. Some of the measure and results that you can see up to date, we have garnered a total impressions of 52 million. I'm sorry. So now that we've covered all that ground, let's talk about the successes to date. I'm sure you've heard all of the media coverage we've gained since opening day of the Sugarland Skeeters, ranging from being nominated as Reader's Digest top 10 nicest places to live in America, Sugarland being named the most business savvy business savvy city in the country by Verizon, just to name a few. With DCI support, we've been able to garner 52 million of earned media results with an estimated 490,000 of ad equivalency to date. Pay digital strategy targeting specific industries has accounted for 2,838 clicks of the website and over a thousand of the traffic was attributed to users searching for manufacturer terms like biotech and HQ keywords. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Of critical success has been the activation of our e-newsletter, which has, has a total of 709 subscribers. Additionally, some of the successes that we've got is DCI has created numerous talking points that have helped guide conversations with not just the media, but also with our local businesses and various stakeholders. Regarding social media, our LinkedIn page has tripled in followers since March to 743, and we've seen an increase in page views. Next slide, please. 
These are some of uh, the publications that have featured Sugarland that you can see here, the Fort Bend Star, the Houston Business Journal, and Biospace. Next slide, please. And now I will hand it over to Kat Saunders, Senior Vice President of Client Strategy to discuss what we can expect in the next 12 months. Um, so building on the, uh, hi everyone, yeah. it's so nice to see all of you. Real live, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's been hard to watch all of you on Zoom the last several months. So um, building on the foundational parts of our plan that we- We, we can't hear you. Yeah, we, we can't hear you like we heard Daphne. I don't know if you're speaking okay. into a different mic. I'm sorry, it had been turned off. I think I've there got it go. back on. Is that better? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So I, I was also saying how nice it is to see everyone in person, uh, for those of you that I've only seen on Zoom recently. Um, for the integrated marketing plan, so what we've done in the last 12 months is really established a core foundational program that relates to your overall place marketing, um, place marketing efforts. So that's not only talking about your business attraction efforts, but also talking talking about your lifestyle, livability, quality of life, quality of place, arts and culture, all the things that make this community such a wonderful place to live. And you may be, you might ask why that's important. That's important because of workforce, right? We need to fill all those jobs with quality candidates who can service the employers that are attracted to this area for the business reasons that we've talked about today. So the goal for next year is to take all of those foundational learnings, those foundational tactics that we've put into place and the strong digital components that have been established and really elevate that and position Sugarland as a location of choice uh, for both business and talent, especially as we come out of the pandemic with COVID-19. Um, next slide, please. You can click. Oh, I click the mouse. Yeah, we'll hold it. Okay. One minute. Just nice. hey, PowerPoint, you can just control it. Okay. I don't know if I did that or you did, but we'll move on. Um, so just one of the great uh, parts about the resources that we've been provided by um, this organization is that we've been able to build out a team to best service this uh, account. We've got Daryl Curran, who you know, helped establish the Sugarland brand um, and went through the branding exercise with you and a lot of the design that you see across the building and a lot of the marketing materials. Um, myself, I oversee this team that is supported by my colleagues that are here with me today who've been pounding the pavement with me, seeing everything here on the ground. We've got Karina, Max, and Brooke who are joining me today from our New York office. Um, Terry is my assistant who supports all of the administration so that our city documents are in order. Um, we have a design team and then Steve Duncan, who is really an expert in business development and lead generation. We have worked together for over 20 years um, collaborating on campaigns where we're able to integrate what you're doing from a marketing perspective with what you want to do from a business development and lead generation perspective. Next slide, please. Okay. <laughs> so what does that mean? What is that building on foundational elements? What are we going to do in year two? So obviously with the current environment that we're in, it is essential that we are consistently and constantly uh, reimagining the way we talk about place and the way we talk about Sugarland. People's, you know, what's important to people, uh, priorities are changing as we continue to see what recovery looks like for organizations. We'll be constantly refreshing your storylines. Um, we are increasing press visits as we are seeing an appetite by journalists wanting to travel again, understanding that they'll be able to travel in a safe and effective way. We're looking to optimize digital. So one of the things that we do with our digital campaigns is 
monitor and constantly pivot as we see what users are doing. So over the last year, what we found was that search was a key element of your digital campaign. Everybody is sitting at their desk searching for things. And so we've really built on that. And we have really paid a lot of attention to people on coastal markets who are searching for relocation opportunities and played into those terms. So when people are looking for Houston, they are looking for Sugarland. We also are doing this in-person visit, and this was something that uh, we really felt with the OED team that was super important for us to get on the ground and really meet with stakeholders, like I mentioned earlier. Also with media relations, and I know some of you saw the six month update report, we have had tremendous uptick in media um, activity and we're really excited about that. It takes a little while to establish those foundational elements, but building on the Reader's Digest um, placement, also we've had trade and industry covering some of your business expansions with the Credo and others. Um, we've also positioned the Office of Economic Development as approaching marketing and placemaking and economic development like a business, talking about how you're doing that well. We've had a byline by Elizabeth Huff that was featured in, in American City and County. What that does is really elevate you as, an organ, as a public sector leader um, in this space. We're also working with employers to amplify announcements. We were at Hope Bio today. You know, they are sending us media stuff already um, as a follow-up of this trip. And we want to coordinate visits where we are getting people here on the ground. Our goal this year is to at least place five to seven national stories. You saw some of the local and regional placements in Texas media. I think what I'd like to call out there, you were paying for a lot of those previously. It was advertising. What we've done is change that approach. This budget supports a proactive media relations stance. So that allows us to get story placements about Sugarland in the Houston Business Journal instead of paying for that ad about Sugarland. And we say that's important because the way we consume content, we are responding to that, that editorial placement much more positively than the, the ad that we've placed. We've expanded site consult consultant outreach and Melissa talked about, we've secured a meeting with a Dallas-based national site selector uh, for Director Huff come in the coming weeks. Um, we also are working on e-newsletters and industry one-pagers. What we found is that when we were getting people to the new website, there was nothing there for them to download and take with them. We wanna see a conversion. We wanna see people really um, activating on what they're reading. The way we can do that is if we have a one-pager on life sciences, they're able to click on that, download it, share it with their colleagues and peers. As I mentioned before, we're also elevating, constantly monitoring. We have a large digital team that's based in Denver that is always looking at the way things are, are, are working on uh, your Google, Google and LinkedIn uh, campaigns in particular. And this is where we've seen a lot, a lot of traction. LinkedIn in particular, we're able to hyper-focus on down to the title, the industry sector, we're able to see what kind of behavior people um, are doing on, on digital platforms. And we're able to tweak your campaign weekly so that we're able to really hone in on those target sectors, advanced manufacturing, life sciences, energy, tech. Um, so looking at those and constantly retargeting what we're doing. We're also building up your organic, your own content. So this is making sure that your voice on social media is out there. And one of the things we heard in our appointments the last three days, everyone's saying, can you share what we've got on your social channels? Can you retweet what we had on our, our social channels last month? And we are working um, collectively daily. We'll often get emails from Teresa and Melissa saying, let's make sure that we're getting this out there, what they're doing. Champion X is doing this. Let's share that. Let's make sure that we're putting that on Sugarland channels too. Um, we're looking at social trends, you know, the way users are behaving and also spotlighting achievements. So when you're winning, uh, winning rankings, whether that's rankings or whether that's new business announcements, whether that's a local business that's growing, a small entrepreneur, a restaurant, that is all economic development news. And social media is a great way to do that. And it's very affordable um, and immediate, you see immediate results. We're also refreshing your marketing materials. So one of the things that Devin had found is there was all this wonderful content that so many different parts of the city had paid for. Everyone had video. What we're going to do is take everyone's video and 
mash that together and make some very digestible small snippets of video that can be shared across social media channels. We talked a little bit about the industry one pagers earlier. Those will also be online. And then we're building out website content. One of the areas that we saw lacking was success stories. So businesses tend to want to know other people have done it first. So we are creating more of those success stories about uh, companies in the area that have already expanded, relocated, found talent. You know, HC, HCSS was a great um, visit for us, you know, kind of refreshing what they're doing in terms of workforce attraction. They're doing some really interesting stuff at the K-12 level. So we'll work to build out those success stories among the team and get those on your website. Did you want to take this or you want thank, me to? Thank you so much, Kat. Okay. Thanks, Melissa. Of course. So once again, the contract, if approved, it would be from October 21st through September 2022. 20, the overall cost is $361,540. Cost shared between 4A and 4B, which is broken down into um, 4A would pay up to $170,770 and 4B to pay up to 190,770. With 4B funding and additional $20,000 to support marketing activation for Sugarland's hospitality business community like hotels and destination venues. Some of the professional services that include our media relations, digital content, site consultant outreach, creative support, digital advertising and lead generation. That would be paid on a monthly basis. Uh, projected expenses, and these are also paid as needed, is digital design, advertising, journalists, visits, staff strategy sessions, RFI, RFQ, RFP support. Next slide, please. So the next steps. We brought this contract approval to you today. And the next steps are to go to the SLDC for approval on September 7th. And if approved by both corporations, the contract will begin on October 1st through September 30th of 2022. Next slide, please. Any questions? I have a question. Yeah, Director Kamali. Do we ahead, have sir. a side-by-side -side comparison of DCI's goals that we were given in the first contract versus the actual achievements? Can we have, what was your question again? I'm sorry. So do we have something that shows in 2021, this is what DCI was supposed to do and this is what we achieved. Now I heard heard you all talk through a few of them, but is there any quantifiable quantifiable items that we can show that because we spent X with DCI in 2021, this is what resulted out, out of it. Now, because you all spoke about um, the Skeeters and the news and all that, but I would think the Skeeters AAA baseball team coming to Houston and being our own Houston Astros team would get the media spotlight. What did DCI do to help in that regard? So I can um, tap into answering some of this, Kat, and then maybe you can back me up on this. Yeah. For example, um, if, if we can go back to the slides, to slide four, and talk about the success to date. Um, I talked about DCI support. We were able to garner 52 million of earned media results. So some of those things you can see are the Reader's Digest top 10 nicest place to live in America. That's one story idea. Um, Sugarland being named most business savvy city in the country by Verizon. Um, we did the Hope Biosciences. Also, we just did the American Council a byline story by Director Elizabeth Huff. That's something that we can um, provide metrics on, which you can see here on the screen about the total impressions and the ad equivalency. Also, we talked about um, the paid search. Some of that paid digital strategy, strategy I'm sorry, helped account to 2,838 clicks to the website. So what that says to us is that the manufacturers that are searching to relocate in biotech or HQ are looking at Sugarland as a potential location to invest their business in. 
Does that kind of help answer your question, Council Member Kramali? It, it does. It, it does help. But I, I'm just, you know, being the business savvy, I, I guess I want to hear from DCI. Sure. What was your role in actually getting us that nomination? Sure. So we proactively pitch that nomination uh, through writers that we normally work with. And our team, our public relations team, media relations team in New York is constantly monitoring for leads, uh, for rankings, and then proactively sharing content about the city of Sugarland to writers within our networks. And when it doesn't work with one writer, we keep going and try and find another one. Um, so we are constantly doing that. We're also providing monthly reports where we are benchmarking against the several, uh, the different components in the contracts, um, in the contract. And we are benchmarking where we stand on a monthly basis across the deliverables that you've um, engaged us for, for the 2020, 2021 fiscal year. Does that help? It, it does. Thank, thank okay. you for, for that answer. Um, and a Kelsey, follow up. Go ahead, go ahead, Melissa. And I was going to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, interrupt you, but I was going to say, if you'd like to see like a side-by-side -side of a year one, um, I can share that with you if you'd like to see that. Yeah. I, and how much did we spend in year one? I think Amy is shaking her head. She would like to see it as well. Yeah. Um, I would definitely. I had the want same to. question. Okay. Yeah. I, I think we need. We, we, we hired you all. Thank you very much. This is what we hired you for. This is what you delivered. And if, yes. it, and if it hits our expectations, then yes, then we can look at removing. And also, what was our contract last year? Because I remember the dollar amount was not this big. It was much smaller. It looks like we're, we've ballooned up quite a bit. So yeah. Melissa, I'll lean on you for the exact contract amount from last year to this year. But also keep in mind, we're still in this fiscal year and the contract for that term has not ended. So what we can give you is going to be a side by side comparison from the work to date. Um, we are very satisfied with the results. We have seen a significant increase. Like part of my director's report was actually going to mention our LinkedIn following has continued to increase almost weekly. I get like a little notification of like 14 new followers. And we were below 500. We're now over, I think, 650 or 700. So um, for us, like, yes, we will get you those metrics. But like, we have continued to send FYIs and information. And like, then I don't know if you, I guess maybe you haven't noticed, but we have been in the news a lot. If you go and look at the Reader's Digest and who actually submitted the um, information for us to make that was not Sugarland City staff, it was DCI staff. So they are, they are out there, they are pitching, they're working really, really hard. Um, I anticipate, and Melissa, I'll lean on you again, um, that we will have savings from this fiscal year because of, I don't know, this big global pandemic that we're in right now. Um, we have not been able to do the visits that we wanted to do. We have not gone up to New York to do the press. And then um, Melissa and Devin, before she went out on leave, worked really, really hard to kind of refine the contract scope of like, okay, this is meeting our needs. This isn't, let's, let's kind of move some money here and let's maybe get rid of um, like some of the digital content as well. And so like the team is monitoring this, they meet weekly. There's a lot of, lot of work that goes into it from our side, our staff side and theirs as well. Um, but like we said, we will get this information to you. So I got the contract amount from uh, fiscal year 21 and it's $238,000, but I know Kat, um, Elizabeth, you, you taught, touched on it a little bit, but for example, some of the new things that we're adding on to the contract for this year is the video content. You know, DCI is going to support us create that, that video content because whenever, um, we went to create that, we need the help to help us compile and tell those stories. Also the industry one pagers, the website content, they're going to be helping us create up to six stories that we can share across social media, highlighting some of our, our businesses in the area. Okay. Can I, can I ask a question, please? Yes. yes. So, so uh, I'm new here. Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm kind of like Nashad owning a business and kind of looking at the, the numbers here <clears throat> and to appreciate what you're doing. And the financial investment, I always look at the ROI. Mm -hmm. So, and that's always a number to me. So if we're putting in say $361,000, uh, are we measuring the ROI in economic growth? Is that a number to us? Because if we're putting in a number, are we doubling that number in economic growth or 
What does that look like? How are we measuring our ROI? Is that a measurable uh, context or is it just, it's, it's vague to me at this point. Mm -hmm. Good question. Exactly. It's probably, that question is the number one question I get whenever I do meetings like that. And also whenever I speak with, um, at conferences and events, everyone's always trying to directly connect their expenditures on things like this right. to CapEx jobs created. Um, what I will tell you is there's no way to directly connect the two. Our goal is to lay the groundwork so when an executive or when a highly skilled developer, um, you know, technology developer is thinking about relocation or expansion or investment that they already in their mind have a perception and a positive reputation for the city of Sugarland and knowing that it's a favorable business environment. And so we have talked to people all over the country. We've tried to do surveys about it. We never succeed. And um, other organizations we work with, IEDC, the International Economic Development Council, and other organizations throughout the country, we've never been able to land on a direct connection. I think we have two examples, um, one in Columbus where someone got served an ad and then activated on a relocation for a dog food um, manufacturing facility like the next within 10 days. And I think we have another one with Warby Parker in the Netherlands where they were served up a piece of content and um, immediately made a move after that for a facility in the Netherlands. Um, what we like to look at is the ongoing economic health of your city. So will that ever be directly connected to marketing? No. Will it ever have a direct um, expenditure association? No. But as long as the trajectory of the city continues to improve on key economic indicators, you know, whether it's housing, median income, uh, employment levels, investment numbers over the course of an annual period, we continue to believe that our program supports that growth. Kind of to caveat on that, like this year, year two is kind of the epitome of um, some synergies coming together. We're really, really excited. Ernst & Young, our workforce analysis and our target industry study is wrapping up right now. We will be bringing that to the boards in October to workshop it and tell you what the recommendations are. But they are ready. We are going to put them to work and they're going to work really hard because not only are we going to have, they know Sugarland, they know um, we have good schools, we have affordable living, um, great quality of life. These are every city out there across the country says they have the best quality of life. So that's what we're competing in. So how do we take the sweetest city in Texas and make that more of our byline instead of just the greatest quality of life? That's the country. Um, but when, so when we get those results, we're going to be really going behind. They're going to have NAICS codes that are reaffirmed or new NAICS codes that they're going to be targeting businesses in high cost markets like Chicago, Boston, San Francisco, and saying, okay, you've got, y'all meet our criteria. You, based on you know, some geocoding and like kind of targeting executives on LinkedIn and then targeting their businesses in different advertising ways, they're gonna be using that data and then they're gonna be ramping up the media. So this year was really like, like Melissa said at the beginning, laying a foundation, getting to know us, us getting to know them. I say, I think has been incredibly successful. The amount of time that we have been in the news of late is incredible. And I don't want it to stop. I think you've set a very high bar for yourselves. Um, but like the, this next year is going to be really exciting to be able to kind of put those two um, work, those two studies and then their work together. Like I really hope to see successes, but I'm not going to stand here and tell you I'm going to land five companies. We have some challenges. We are a city that has very few greenfield sites left and we have a lot of redevelopment work, but that doesn't mean we aren't going to be successful. It's just going to be different. So I'm excited about it. We will definitely get that information to you. Um, does that answer your question? Director Atkinson? Um, I appreciate the questions that we had from uh, Ms. Watkins and Carmally. Um, and I guess my question is probably to you, Liz, but uh, more than anything, um, we, we've been through this pandemic and of course it's not over in many respects. Uh, so I guess the question I have is, is the effectiveness of the investment we made in the last contract, the effectiveness of uh, bank for our buck, if you will, or benefit for the investment, a little less because we had the pandemic? And if so, or if not, would we expect that to be the case with this next contract? Uh, 
And again, I think a lot of what we're talking about here, I've heard a lot of accomplishment that did not require FaceTime. Okay, it is, it's data diving, it's, it's information, social media, and everything else. And so I didn't hear much information that tells me we've lost any effectiveness on the investment. But I just asked the question, because I think we should ask it, is, is have we not gained as much effectiveness as we planned from it? And if so, or if not, is this next contract have any factor that we should consider or expect? So I wouldn't say that we've like lost effectiveness. I will say that we weren't able to do everything we wanted to do because we couldn't fly to New York and meet with some of their public, their media relation contacts. So imagine what could have been had we been able to perform like it's a normal year, like we were planning to do before the pandemic hit. So um, I don't, I can't quantify that and what that success would have looked like. I do believe we would have had more successes, but I am incredibly satisfied with where we are right now. And I would not be bringing this to you if I was not confident in our ability to take this forward. Um, marketing is not cheap. If like statutorily, the amount of money that we can spend on marketing is 10% of our revenue. We are nowhere near spending that amount of money. We are spending a very small fraction of our total yeah. revenue. Um, so overall, there are probably corporations out there that are spending a lot more money than we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, quick question. Elizabeth, uh, what is our plan once this contract uh, comes to an end, uh, September, 2022, are we planning to have another campaign or, or is, is this just a one-time uh, campaign we are, we are doing? So I think successful marketing takes work and our plan is to continue to refine the scope of work. And as long as we are successful and we are gaining value from the work and the contract, our goal would be to continue that. How that scope of work changes year by year, I don't know, but like after this year, if we have successful videos, our industry one pagers are working, they may need a refresh. They're not gonna need a redo. So the cost of that is gonna change. Um, but I do anticipate as long as we're being successful, I would like to maintain this relationship and this contract. If you want us to land businesses, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Any other questions? So I, I did just have a, a, a bit of a follow-up, I think, and it's either a cat or Elizabeth. So, and it kind of get, relates to Director Gassani going forward. Um, I heard Melissa talk about these additional things, the one-pagers and the, and the videos and the visits. The visits, though, that amount isn't included in this 361, is it? Because this is that's payment to... DCI, the visits got to come out of your budget. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? Our trips to meet That's with- That's right. Can we, can we place the budget in, in budget terms and conditions sheet back up on the presentation, please? Because I have a breakdown of what that looks like. And I, while she's doing that, I would, I would also add that no expenses are billed until they are incurred. And as an agency, we have a policy that we are not marking up expenses for our clients. It's been a longstanding uh, policy of our agency. All right. Okay. So, ma'am, to answer your question, that's under that would be under the projected expenses. Okay, but that is including the trips made by the Office of Economic Development in Sugarland. Those are projected. Yes, ma'am. Right, because that's that's not just money going to DCI, that's money within our department, within Sugarland. yes? Yes, ma'am, yes. Okay, so now let's go back. What is actual the actual amount that we would be spending with DCI directly? Not 361, it would be less than that. It would be $190,770. No, that's 4B and then 4A is 170. I get that, but no, it should be less than that. That's what I'm trying to understand. The contract to DCI would not include Sugarland people's trips. So that Are should not be in the contract to DCI. So the it would be the professional services, the 29640 is going to be going to be incurred. The other projected expenses is just our um, 
opportunity that it's there in case we need it. We budgeted for it, but we don't know, like, again, if we shut down again, or we Delta continues to ramp up like it is right now, we may be impacted as far as travel and all of that stuff. This, the projected expenses is going to cover, say DCI's travel, if they accompany us to Chicago and we meet with someone from the media or site selectors or something like that, that is what is in, in, um, in that projected expenses. As far as staff travel, um, we are budgeting that. We also have trips outside that is not any like encumbered or reflected in here at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so there is though a difference that staff travel is included in this contract or in this budget request. Is that true or not true? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to go. Obviously, we don't know exactly on the project's expense paid as needed, but the amount paid to DCI would be less than the 361. So is that correct? <laughs> I'm looking at the contract here, and I don't know if this will help answer your question, but for example, um, the monthly invoice for that SL4B would get would be an amount of $15,897.50. And then, for example, the SLDC and SL4B, under, the life, under this contract, it will not exceed the $296,040. Okay. All right. And then the... Last, and it's it's just because I don't maybe understand, why is the 4B just paying that additional 20? Why is that not split equally between 4B and 4A? So there are restrictions on the 4A okay. corporation where we cannot pay for quality of life marketing. And that's where we are leveraging that, the 4B corporation. That was the thing I couldn't remember. So thank you. Okay. Right. All good with my questions. Any other questions by anybody else? I have a question. I had a question. Now, could the hot taxes pay any of that extra twenty thousand dollars? Is it specific to like hotel stuff? So that was our original plan before COVID, and then COVID has had a significant impact on our hot tax. So we have had to transition some of our funding um, and expenses from away from the hot fund to four uh, B. And just so you know, like, I mean, we've talked about this before where we transition staff even to help offset and preserve the hot tax as much as we can. All right. So do I have a motion to approve? I, I have one more question. Go ahead, Director Kamali. Um, 238 was last year's budget. And because we didn't travel and others, do we know what our year to date expenses are so far on this? No, but we can answer that. We can provide that answer to your question. Was Not there at this something moment. behind it, Director Kamali, that you were asking about regarding that? that you no, I, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to see what, because of COVID and the non-travel, how much did we not spend of the 238? Melissa, maybe you can answer this. How much was a hard cost of the DCI contract that we pay out monthly for 2021, what was that? Uh, 15,000. 15,000 a month? Hang on, let me let me pull it up so I can um, best answer your question. So we are still in that old, right. con that first contract. Yeah. So we won't have that full amount and that contract will close out at the end of September, but we are not right. there yet. Which is just a month and a half away. Right, yeah. right. And, but Melissa should know how much we've been paying every month between, since we've started. And that's true. And I apologize, I don't have that number, but I can get that to you guys, not a problem. Because that would be the difference, those two hard cost numbers that you're referring to, Director Kamali. That, that's aren't, correct. They aren't as significant. Melissa does not handle the invoicing and the trend like requisition. So that she's more focused on the actual uh, deliverables and, and no, no, no problem. Work. How about Kat? Can you answer? Yes. Do you know what the contract <laughs> I was is? Say if we could yeah. go back to the, the first slide um, yeah. so you can see. And I would also just comment on uh, where you asked about the additional funding for fiscal 22-21-22 is we identified because of the pandemic, that where you would have used a nice glossy uh, tear sheet brochure to go out to an industry meeting with someone, 
all of a sudden, Devin was getting a call about a life sciences prospect and she had nothing to share. So a lot of the investments that we're making for the next fiscal year relate to pivots in business development demands due to what COVID has presented us. Um, we've had to market in a different way. So all of those adjustments directly respond to impacts of the pandemic. Oh, this, this slide previously had the um, amount on it. But yes, it is roughly 15,000 per month. We can easily get a drawdown to incorporate professional fees to date, um, along with the hard cost on expenses associated with the program. That's provided in our monthly report, as well as um, our digital metrics report that we provide the Office, um, the office of Economic Development with every month. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any other comments, Director Kamali? No, I guess the question for staff would be, if we're still waiting on more information, I'm assuming staff is gonna look for us to vote. Uh, Council Member Kamali, I have the question. Okay. Answer to your question. So it's split between both corporations, 15,750. Meaning both of them each at 15 or total 15 together? It's between both. Which would be about 160, 186 um, minus the 238. And we just don't know what the balance of the 238, how much expenditures we had. Th thank you. Thank you for that, Melissa. I, I guess my, my question for staff and, and maybe Jennifer and, and Elizabeth is can we get a little bit more information before we vote on this? At least for, for my benefit, if the other directors feel comfortable, then that's fine, I'll stay out. Sure, I mean, of course, um, we have been, I think we, we decided to bring this as um, for approval just because we had had other workshops and stuff where we weren't getting a lot of questions or concerns and we weren't hearing from y'all, so we thought, that we would be okay doing that, but we are happy to put this as an action item on the next agenda and bring it back. Absolutely. Because I think you want to put it on the September 7th SLBC meeting um, is what I saw the, the plan of action. And Correct. So do but, we need to have another meeting prior to the SLBC meeting for the 4B Corporation because we should sign off on it before it goes to SLBC? We do no, not. We don't. This, is, this is the meeting. But what we can do is workshop it with SLDC and then maybe do a joint SL4B SLDC approval and at the September SL4B meeting so that we can get started on the contract October 1. Sure he has a deal. I, I like that idea. Yeah, I do as well. I don't think he has a deal. And maybe uh, um, Elizabeth and Melissa, if we, some of the things that you've heard the questions about seeing maybe one of the reports or the full report with what we commissioned and what was delivered as well as the finances. Um, Council member Kermali. So, so far to date, we've spent 223,000. Right, so we spent a majority of the 238. Yes, yes, sir. So, so and that- We have again, 15K remaining. Uh, agreed, but that just, once again, I've heard a lot that, well, we haven't done this and this in New York because of COVID but we only have $15,000 in the grand scheme of things. It's not very much money left um, in the pot. For, and we have a month and a half left. Right. So we, we get billed monthly regard, and that, that covers the um, contract for the year. And right. so the scope of work changes month to month. And as Kat mentioned, we did have a um, different situation where we kind of pivoted at the very beginning where they provided some additional support on a business development lead that we had. And so um, I'll, we'll have to go back and we can get some more line item information. My request of you would be that if you could send your specific questions to John um, or to Tia and make sure that we have your questions so that we can answer them appropriately and be prepared, we will do that. I would encourage council members to send them to Cindy, Cindy D's and, um, and then however you wanna handle for me. Yeah, my, my, my one question, Elizabeth, and I think this is chairman's question as well, is can you please show us a side-by-side -side of what the contract deliverables were and what did we get out of it? 
all the costs associated with it, which would be the secondary portion of it. And if, and Kat, I, don't, I mean this as no disrespect, what I'm about to say, I truly mean this as no disrespect. If we didn't have DCI in the picture, what is the city of Sugarland missing out on? Got it. Right? And then the other thing, the second question, that was one question, which was very loaded, so I don't have to type it out to Cindy. The second question is, when I look at the city of Pearland, which has 122,000 population, they have 26,000 followers on their Facebook page. When I look at the city of Sugarland, we have 126,000 population, and we have 24,000 followers on our Facebook page. What is DCI and how is DCI going to help us get more followers on social media? Because that's what we're talking about. So real quick, I also want you to remember that there's a difference between Office of Economic Development and the city of Sugarland. DCI is not representing the city of Sugarland and that Sugarland brand and that social media. We have a communications department that is dedicated to that work. We obviously collaborate very strongly with them, but DCI is here for economic development purposes only. Got it. You answered my question, but it doesn't help us because we're 2000 behind Pearland, a city that is equally sized as us. Well, we are working at that, um, but I, I echo what, what Elizabeth said, but I would also add that I think um, because social media is out there and it's happening all the time, it seems like a very easy, and I, I even said it myself, it's a very easy, quick thing to do. That doesn't mean there's a lot of time that goes into, into the um, social media content. It is a living, breathing thing. You have to feed it all the time. You have to feed it even more when there is news in, the, um, it, in other channels that is pushing down your news. Our goal and this team here that's here with me today, um, we are constantly monitoring that and, and breathing life into that every single day. And it is a heavy lift behind the scenes. Um, so we are continuing to work at that and we continue to uh, elevate the Office of Economic Development in that way. Thank you. All right. So with that, we'll close this item and it will be reviewed and discussed and voted on in our September session. Can we, can we I'm sorry, can we, we make a clear motion as to what we wanted to do? A table. We, we need to make a motion to table or postpone? I'll okay, make the motion so, to table. I'll make the motion to table this um, okay. for a future meeting, whether it's with SL4B and SLDC together um, or separate, I'll allow staff to, to figure that out, but I'll table it. All right, do I have a second? I'll second that. Who, who was that? Watley. <laughs> Watley. Watley. I know they keep saying Watkins, Watkins. I'm like, it's Watley. Watley. <laughs> Watley. So thank you. Um, Director Atkinson. Aye. Director McCutcheon. Aye. Director Gassani. Aye. And I also approve that motion. You need, you need to um, get the vote from. Do Watley I also have to, yeah. I'll go back yeah. to him again. Okay. Director Kermali. Aye. And Director Watley. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carried unanimously. Let's thank you, Kat. Appreciate it. Thank you. And your team as well that, that joined you. So thank you for all that information. I know we're asking thank for you. more. I, I know we're asking for more. We'll get there. Thank you so much. All right, the next one is consideration of an action on amending the fiscal year 2021 budget to projections, adoption of the proposed fiscal year 2022 budget, and a recommendation of the proposed fiscal year 2022 budget to the mayor and members of the city council. Scott Butler presenting. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, no, we get your, you got to press the mic again if you're up at the front. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I apologize for that. Um, in, the interest, 
In the interest of time, um, because we've seen some of this, a lot of this information before, um, I'm going to move fairly quickly. But please, if there's questions, I'm happy to to answer those questions. First, I just want to touch base on where we've been and where we're going. So, as far as um, the reviews that we've take that have taken place on the 13th with the budget committee on the 21st with the full board. We're here today to talk about amending the FY21 budget to projections with a um, recommendation to approve the FY22 budget to refer to council in preparation for September 21st when this budget will be considered with the um, entire FY22 uh, budget for council's consideration. <laughs> So uh, this, is the, this is a summary for FY21. Uh, you'll recall that uh, essentially revenues are performing higher. Uh, we had conservative estimates as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but the revenues are coming in higher. The expenses that were, um, that were not realized um, has to do with First Colony, the incentive that was provided to them if they met a certain threshold that was not met. And so that's the difference there, which results in approximately a million dollars um, coming to the ending fund balance for the end of FY21. Looking into FY22, um, <clears throat> we, have a, we have, again, we have a conservative sales tax estimate uh, based on uh, continued recovery with target additions being smart financial uh, opening and, and business that'll take place there as well as other areas. Uh, on the expenditure side, um, it includes debt service, uh, in incentives include $2.5 million that have been allocated for uh, co uh, Constellation. The first colony mall incentives are reserved for opportunity budget is um, at $500,000 based on what's available funding. And then as um, Elizabeth mentioned, transfers out, we include um, to cover uh, CPI or CIP uh, management fees, cost allocation, uh, percentages and as well as the tourism uh, funding that has been allocated uh, to this fund in order to help with business recovery in the absence of uh, work on the tourism side. This is just a quick summary of the projects that are included for the CIP. The first three are part of annual amounts that are allocated in order to address these improvements uh, and then you see the remaining two there. The total four uh, FY22 is a million dollars allocated to the CIP. In terms of the five-year forecast, um, again, it's a conservative uh, forecast as we continue to monitor the recovery. Um, for FY23, uh, um, well, we management policy statements, management financial policy statements say that we follow the February uh, CPI, CPI numbers. Um, that was at 1%. One, 1%. You'll recall that we talked about the most recent April CPI numbers were around 4.5% for the Houston area. Um, we want to be conservative. We want some middle ground. So um, we have the FY23 projection at 1.5%. Uh, looking at FY24, um, we reset it back to FY19 actuals. And what's that, what that allows us to do is it, it helps us to prevent the compounding of downside risk over the forecast period. And then in the out years, per the financial management policy, the revenue, um, the percentage is 3% based on, again, on financial management policy statements. Uh, in terms of the expenditures across the forecast for reserve for opportunities, there is $6.5 million allocated within the forecast period. And then incentives include $7.5 million for improvements at Constellation. <laughs> This is just a slide to show the, the CIP projects that are included in, within the five years. Uh, I, I think the one I'll highlight is the money that's allocated for the Brazos River turnaround. That's for this fund that doesn't recommend, that re represent the entire project cost. That was quick, but any questions on the budget in terms of amending it for FY21? Any questions from the board? No. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve by McCutcheon. Second, Carvalho. All right, uh, Director Gassani. Yes, uh, I approved, yeah. Aye. Director, Director Watley. Aye. 
And uh, Director Atkinson? Aye. Director McCutcheon? Aye. Director Kamali? Aye. And I approve. The budget amendment and action has approved unanimously. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now let's move to the, the final item, the director's report. I know we're a little bit over at this point. We had lots of questions. Elizabeth. Hey, so I had to run out, but um, just really quick, uh, we will send a some slides, but we did make it um, a byline uh, story in the American city and county. Um, showcasing our success with the all unprecedented acts and specifically sweet cash program. It was a really unique opportunity to be able to um, showcase us as a how we have approached our work from a business standpoint, not so much a government and encouraging other governments to use us as an example. So curious what kind of response we get from that, but um, was an exciting opportunity. And then next slide, um, wanted to continue to encourage you to follow us on our LinkedIn and our social media channels and connect with staff um, on LinkedIn um, because we did have an opportunity where a chalk artist was commissioned um, to celebrate the Olympics and they, our staff helped um, find the location for the chalk art and where we were able to celebrate our, our um, local Simone Manuel, who is from Sugarland. So, and then she obviously went out and read, uh, reposted it too, and was able to see there and be on the site, which was pretty cool. So that's all I've got. We'll see y'all soon. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Do I have a motion to close the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion approved. Thank you, everyone. We'll see each other in September.